Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back for Tuts Plus and uh, I've got a pretty interesting tutorial for you here uh, on a reasonably new product. Something that I used um, on a really big mastering project, mixing a mastering project for a Friends album, an EDM album and uh, something that had to be moulded so that it was delivered correctly in loads of different formats. Now Sonox as a company, um, Sony Oxford, uh, make some really great tools and one of them is uh, uses the, the Fraunhofer Kodak. Now, recently they've released um, something called the Kodak Toolbox, um, and it runs as two separate things. It runs as an app, which is this thing here, the Kodak Toolbox Manager, which we'll be looking at later, and the uh, a plugin, and I'll just load that now, uh, which runs great inside Logic, by the way. Uh, there's the Kodak Toolbox. It's just this tiny little plugin. Um, and these are the two separate components. Now they do a more professional codec toolbox, uh, which is really quite expensive. Um, and it is obviously for mastering houses and uh, pro studios. But what it does is it runs in higher sample rates. So it's going to run um, in, you know, 192, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the codec toolbox, if I'm right, I think runs at 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. Now, personally, and I don't know about you guys, but personally, I work at 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, and then I move to 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz for release and delivery. And I think that it works great for me, and that's electronic music or, you know, sort of indie stuff, um, some rock as well. I mean, you know, generally, unless I think, you know, if you're recording orchestral or if you're recording really, really huge high-end um, sessions, then working at the higher sample rates may be worthwhile but personally i think 44.1 and 48 for video and i work at 48 for video stuff um works just fine for me um with a good with a good set of converters um i it, you know tell me if i'm wrong in the comments you know <laughs> i'm sure there's some some guys out there that are going to disagree with me on that but if you do work at these lower sample rates if you're happy to stay at 44.1 or 48 like myself then the codec toolbox is incredibly good value for money okay you're looking at uh, around um, 30 pounds for both components so you get the plugin and the application for that uh, for that cash so personally i think it's just an absolute steal now the way it works is you the plugin is what you're going to use first and it's really um to audition what it's going to sound like in specific uh codecs and specific uh, delivery formats so if you're uh, preparing for itunes um and you know there is only 256 uh, kbps variable bit rate in the itunes plus format okay so let's go ahead and play the uh, the track back and once you do you can start to audition and also visualize how the codec is performing, the, yeah, the codec, the specific codec you want to use. So if you're going to deliver an iTunes Plus format, and that only comes in variable bit depth, uh, 256 kbps, then you can start to see how that's affecting your mix. And in this mix, all the mastering processes are on. I've got some metering uh, beforehand. Now the client, by the way, wanted this loud. There was a mastering <laughs> tutorial uh, I did, I think, on one of these tracks. So don't comment about how loud it is because that, that's how they requested it. Um, but you can see that without the the codec on, there is no overs, you know. Although the dynamic range is killed, um, there's no overs. But now we're starting to get overs. Let me turn the Vox off. Now you don't have to worry too much about me auditioning this because it's more of a visual thing here. But um, you can reset the over. And you can also change it in real time, the output gain, to ensure that you don't get those overs. There we go. It doesn't take much. In fact, let's turn the, the limiting down a bit. There we go. Now, in this particular case, we're not getting any noise to mass ratio problems. That's what NMR is. And basically, it's telling you, you know, if there's any noise uh, present in the, in the codec, um, 
whether it's affecting, we've got a little over there, whether it's affecting the high frequency, mid frequency or low frequency, it will reduce frequency response essentially. So if you uh, start to look at lower resolution stuff, so an MP3 at 96, you see here, we've got more overs and also um, we're really getting, uh, you know, the, the effects here, uh, reducing um, the high end and the high mid. So you might want to think about that and maybe you want to increase some EQ if that's, you know, how you plan to deliver your material. And if it sounds okay to you, then it probably is. But, you know, possibly you might want to uh, change the way your mix is for that specific um, codec. Now, some of these will really reduce the high end. Um, and sometimes you start to see the low end uh, getting reduced as well. So it's well worth, there's your input and there's the codec, you can compare between them. And you can just keep an eye on everything and make sure that it's functioning correctly. And I think the most important thing is making sure there's no overs. Obviously, the, some of these codecs are going to reduce high end. I wouldn't start hyping the high end loans, but you can maybe add a touch of high end EQ. Once you're happy um, with what you've got running and, you know, you say you know you're going to run in the iTunes Plus format because you're delivering to iTunes and you're happy with the level, you can go ahead and export it and without the codec turned on there. And then we can look at uh, the same track here in uh, the actual codec toolbox manager and once we're in here we can play it back let's go to the itunes plus format i've got clips safe on to ensure that it doesn't go over um, but also we you know we set we exported it with the right settings and then you can also put your metadata in so you can type in your artist your album title etc etc and when you're ready um, you can either save it to the input folder or you can save it to your desktop wherever you want and then you can go ahead and encode it. And what it do does is with the clip safe, it's quite clever. You can see that it's going to export it and it's going to uh, ensure that the levels are exactly right. It finds the maximum user levels and uh, it's going to ensure that there's absolutely zero clipping. And the result that I found uh, is it's just about the best encoding that I've ever heard, really. Great. So, you know, it, you get good results. It's great to audition in any DAW or door, uh, and then you can go into the main program and you can, you know, use all these extended settings and save your own presets as well, which is great. You know, once you've got, uh, you know, something you're happy with, you can save it. And most importantly, put images and metadata in there and lock it up as well. Um, so just a really great tool for 30 pounds. You can't really go wrong. Uh, it's so much better than, you know, just using some random codec from somewhere that you're you know, not sure where it came from. This is the proper... Uh, Sonox Fraunhofer stuff uh, and about as good as it gets. So hopefully this is useful to you. Nice little money saver before Christmas if you're delivering stuff in MP3 or any other format. Uh, go out and buy it. I, I strongly recommend it and um, enjoy. I'll see you guys after Christmas. Have a great one. Have a great Christmas and New Year and uh, as always suggest any tutorials you'd like to see from me in the future.